everybody. Welcome. It was so hot today. It's unbelievable. I think um, summer is here with a vengeance. A little bit earlier than I thought. But So I hope you had a good day. hope you didn't melt too much. The other day I got rained on too, so... Karen, you're on really early. What? <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Yeah, he's not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, sorry I scared you out with my big, ugly face. No, you got a big, gorgeous face. <laughs> uh, it's good to see everybody tonight. Yeah. It's Wednesday. We're halfway through the week, and uh, life's good. Oh, I forgot a light. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, flip it on. When we will get this... The hang of this. We soon. probably won't, actually, but that's okay. There we go. A little more light's always good. Okay. All righty. All right. So let's look at again relationships tonight. <laughs> Karen said your face scared her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Just playing, babe. No, you're All not. right. All right. Well, we've been liking this uh, series this week. It's just on relationships. It's it's good. Something we all deal with and uh, will forever. So it's it's good. It's good. Yes, it is. Um, and two, just in case you're watching tonight and you haven't been watching the last couple of nights, um, we just have penciled in. Well, not penciled in, but um, June seventh is going to be our first time back. We oh, sent great. out a we sent out a survey please fill it out yeah that would help us a lot yeah and it has helped us a lot to get a good gauge with things um so again just you'll hear me say this for this week and next week um just remember when we come back be patient you know we're gonna have to seat people differently and all that kind of stuff but i can tell you this we're gonna have a good time when we get back god's always shows up and, you know, we just can trust his presence is going to change our lives. So we're looking forward to it. I think, his, I just think that we're going to come back and see something really amazing happening just because the hunger level um, for people, for God and the realization, the awakening within all of us of how important our faith is and how important a local church really is and, and how beautiful and precious like the Bible says, the gathering of the saints actually is that, um, I, you know, when, when our hunger level, um, and our expectation grows, um, God meets those things. He answers hungry hearts. And so I, I just have amazing expectation in my heart for, uh, what this, um, trial and hard thing has done for the body of Christ. I think it's going to benefit us greatly. Yeah. So starting after this week, we're going to start a new series called What What Now? And I'm looking forward to that series because so many of us is, you know, you know, what now? You know, we're right still in the middle of this and moving forward. Uh, and no matter what we talk about, I just want to so encourage you to remember this. I know we're excited to get back to the church, but remember, it's just a building that we meet in. You and I are the church. And we can't think we will get back to church that way. Yeah, we're going to get back to being together in a building at a church. But you and I are the church. And the Bible says the people are. And we need to remember every day we still can be a witness for Naples Church. We still can be doing small random acts of kindness. We still can be inviting people, uh, telling them to go to the internet. We still can reach people and get them saved. And get them the life, uh, you know, saving power of a loving God. And so it's so important that we remember that, that this isn't going to end anytime soon. And we have to really learn to be the disciples and be the church out in um, public, everywhere we go. Uh, so remember that that you are the church and God and the Holy Spirit will move through you where you're at every single day. Just ask them every day, Lord, who do you need me to touch today? And if you'll do that simple thing, something's gonna come up and something's gonna happen and you'll just get that 
unction, as my wife talked about a couple weeks ago, just that, that nudge, we call it, that Holy Ghost nudge to help someone or do something, to pay someone's gas, to help with grocery, whatever it is. Uh, and, and if we continue to do that, we're going to be the church and reach people. That's right. And not only that, but patience and kindness are a very, very precious, beautiful Christian virtue that is not readily found yeah. in the world, especially during hard times. <clears throat> and what better ways to exemplify Christ in this season? So true. So true. Let me um, open with something I read this morning in my daily devotional. And I liked it, and it's just a real quick little thing that I just want to share with you because of the time and the season that um, we're in, and it's just amplified now. We always have struggles. We always have things, but it's really, this situation is trouble on steroids, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just so amplified. And Psalms 46, 1 says, God is the, our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. So that word trouble and, and I'm just going to read to you what this is and from my, my devotional. Trouble, what exactly are we talking about? The Hebrew word means tightness. That, the kind that is caused by adversity, anguish, distress, or tribulation. Mm -hmm. they, that kind of covers it all, what we're feeling. It refers to a situation or time of extreme discomfort mm -hmm any affliction which comes for many different reasons. And so we need to remember in this time that God is our refuge, God is our strength, and he is very present. I like that very present. We know he's present, mm -hmm. but in these times he's very present, good. which I love. You know, we know he's in us, we know he's with us, but he's very, very with us in these times. So keep that in the center of your heart. Keep that at the core of your, your belief every single day that, he, that he's our refuge and strength. And so just down a little bit, you'll see that uh, through the scripture, um, you see Jacob built an altar in Bethel to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and was with me wherever I went. Job's friend said, assured Job that from one disaster to another, he delivers you no matter what the calamity, that evil can't touch you. And then of course, King David tells us that God is a sanctuary during bad times. So those three things and just this little devotional, what a timely devotional for all of us. Do you want to add anything no, to that? No, that's just so good. And so let's just remember that little encouragement before we get into looking at relationships. So when we look at relationships, you know, again, we're looking at Paul's last words. Um, the, you know, the last, the last things that he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 9 through 22. And he categorized them. There's about seven, eight of them, different things that he uh, broke out, different types of relationships. And so today, let's start with relationships from afar. Um, all of us have relationships at a distance. Relationships. Hey, did you guys all see where the pig was today? Guess and who, he found it again. Guess who just found it? I can't believe he found that. I don't even know why and how. Look at him look at us. Like, why is he up there? What are you doing? All right, you want to get it? I will get it. <laughs> and so we all have relationships from a distance. So relationships, you'll see that in 2 Timothy 4.10, it says, Crescens from Galatia, Titus from Dalmatia, 2 Timothy 4.12, I sent Titus, I guess, to Ephesus. In 2 Timothy 4.19 through 20, greet Priscilla and Aquila. Um, Erastus stayed in Corinth. Trophimus was left in Miletus. 2 Timothy 1.15, this you know that in all those in Asia have turned away from me. Among them is the Gilimus and Hermogenes. Um, sound, sounds like, um, um, <laughs> forget it, I won't say it. <laughs> mayonnaise to me, like a mayonnaise brand, Hermogenes, but anyways. <laughs> The Lord grant mercy to the household of Oniferous, 
who often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. I like that. So you see two types of people in this, but you see many of them. He's talking about relationships from a distance, from afar. But they were important relationships to him. And we, not all of our relationships are going to be close. It says that he arrived in Rome. He sought me out very zealously and found me the Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me in Ephesus. And so, you know, one thing that I've learned and probably as you've, get, you've gotten older too, some of you that have watched, you'll realize that the older you get, the rela relationships change and they adjust. And the ones that are, as we looked at yesterday, the five that are the closest to you or the 15, you realize how important it is to have relationships that can be at a distance and you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry that if you don't call them every day or every week or every month, you know when you do, you're right back as a friend. I mean, it's just right there. And it's not like, oh, are they mad at me? Are they upset at me? And we need those relationships in our lives because we're so busy. We need those ones that we know we can call them at any time and they'll be there for us even if you don't talk all the time. And not only that, but I like there's two things that we have here. We see certain ones turned away from him, and then there was others that refreshed him and weren't ashamed of the things he was going through. A Walter Winchell said this, A real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. What a great quote. Um, here's a couple. Do you want anything? No. Okay. Um, here's a couple other, you know, something else I want us to think about in our lives. Well, I'm going to wait till the very end. Forget it. Let me move on. I put this uh, in the wrong spot. Um, then there's relationships with people that are, are uh, relationships with people that are just, you can count on them. You know, we have to have those relationships that, you know, the ones that will stick with you closer than a brother. Um, Paul called those people faithful. You know, the faithful ones in your lives. And in 2 Timothy 4.11, it says this, only Luke is with me. It's interesting, Luke's name is only mentioned three times in the New Testament. But stop and think of the impact Luke had of the books he wrote, uh, the ministry he did. And at the, you know, towards the end of, in, in Paul's life, it says Luke was the only one with him. So that through that whole time, he was faithful to help Paul in his life as we read the other ones are too. I love Proverbs 20, verse six. It says this, many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is really faithful? You know, can I tell you during this time, you know, as we look at things yesterday, we looked at things that are gonna disappoint, we're gonna think someone's gonna be there and they won't be. We all have those. Can I tell you again, there is one who is really faithful and that's Jesus Christ. That's right. He will always be faithful. You know, the psalmist said, can we find one who's really faithful as a question? Let me tell you, you never ever have to question whether or not God's gonna be there. He will always be faithful. He will always stand by your side. He will always help you through everything you're facing. And then I'm just going to kind of end with this one. And uh, tonight, um, the last couple of nights, we've, you know, we did go just a little bit longer than normal. And so I'm going to end with this. And then I want to end with one other, one other thought to, uh, for you for today. And that is this, you know, there are going to be times in your life too. Paul had times when relationships were strained. You know, there was a period of time where they just were strained, but they came back later. And you see that in 2 Timothy 4.11, it says, Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful for me in ministry. Early on, they had some type of disagreement, some type of arguments, something that caused them that was that was pretty strong that caused them to go their separate ways. But you know, have you noticed time has a way of mending things? 
time has a way of bringing things back. Time has a way of, as Maria, I believe, talked about yesterday, helps you bring perspective to certain things you didn't always see or understand. And that's why it's so important in your life. Do everything you can not to burn bridges. Do everything you can not to do that because you never know what the future holds. You never know what's going to you know, happen and, and come about. And that's why working with one, loving one another as we started this whole thing out, all the different things the Bible talks about, be at peace with one another, help one another, uh, encourage one another, pray for one another, all those different things in our lives are so important. So honey, you want to add anything before I end? I just think the, um, along those lines, I, I think it was one of your Bible school teachers that said, you can disagree without being disagreeable. It's very true. And that's that's a heart thing. You can disagree without being disagreeable. So that has been something we've really, 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 you know, tried to live by and to keep in mind that, um, you know, don't be disagreeable. We can disagree yep. respectfully, kindly, nicely. Yeah, it's very good. So let me um, end with this thought. I want to go back to some of these things that, that can happen in our lives and with relationships and, and not just relationships, but in people in general. And I heard this statement, we can be basement people or balcony people. And I think that's a great term to use and others have used it. You can pull it up on the internet and all those different things. Um, but you know, in our lives, we, we, get to get, we get to make a choice. Are we going to be basement people or are we going to be balcony people? What does that mean? Either we're going to bring people down or bring people up. And I believe God's in the business of, as we say, living word, living word. Did you see that? I said it. It's After all these 20 years, years, 20 years. Naples, Naples Church, Naples. you know, as Naples Church needs to be a, a safe place, not a place of condemnation, but a place of truth and grace. And because we have to lift people up and meet them where they're at. And there's nothing like a, a good word in season. And right now with all the pressure and all the stress, this is why relationships are important. You need to surround yourself with people that are going to bring you up, that are going to lift you up. And also, I just think it's a good time for, for you. And this is what I want to challenge you at before we close is this is, you know, I want you to pause and take an inventory um, and look at the relationships in your lives and see if they need to change a little bit to where you need to invest in them. You know, you, you know, and, and maybe in this season, you're beginning to realize some relationships that haven't maybe been where they needed to be or should be. They've kind of been too distant. Maybe they've been too far apart and that now I'm talking just maybe it is a distance things or just in life. You've let some things slip or whatever. You know, pause and, and, and just take a moment and ask God to, to bring light and wisdom to you in your relationships. Here's four of them, okay? This is about as far as you're going to get here. Ask him about your relationship with him first. You know, take inventory of your relationship with him. With him. You know, tonight before you go to bed, when you wake up in your devotional. Ask him if it's where it's supposed to be. Have I invested in that enough? And you know, God, what I love about God is you don't have to worry about it. He, he is going to gently lead you and tell you what you need to do. He's not going to beat you over the head. You know, I'll say this real quick. Sometimes we can um, condemn ourselves, but we all like in our heads almost say like it's God doing it or something like this. You're like, God, am I doing, am I right with you or have I been doing enough or whatever? And then we'll sit and condemn ourselves and beat ourselves up um, as we talk to God and almost view it as though God feels that way about us. Um, and that's where we have to rely on scripture because that isn't how God feels about us. He's always kind. He's always gentle. He'll always guide us nicely. And so, um, we want to make sure that we're not only acting like and reflecting God to others, but to ourselves, because God doesn't treat us that way. And we should not be beating ourselves up 
Um, we should be accepting what God's word says, trusting what God's word says, and even when our feelings might conflict that, that we lean towards the word of God and who God is rather than um, leaning and trusting more in our own feelings. Because as you all know, our own feelings can change and go up and down according to what is going on that day, but God never changes. No, he never does. So take inventory with God. Take inventory with your family. Is that where it needs to be? Then with your friends and then with those in your workplace. You know, and it's just good to do that. It's just good to pause for a second and um, just see if some need some tweaking and adjusting. And uh, so we'll leave with that tonight and we'll pray with you. Um, tomorrow will be the maybe the last night that we look at this because um, tomorrow night it might be a little longer because we're going to look at toxic relationships and the ones that Paul talked about that were toxic that he had to deal with in his life. So we might go a little bit longer tomorrow night, but then next week as we get ready to re-enter, you know, um, going, getting back to church uh, and different things, part of the teaching I'm going to be talking in on Sundays and what now, you know, I think we're all asking ourselves what's it going to be like and all these different things. I don't know how much we can answer, but we'll do the best we can. But next week we're going to look at a um, couple things, um, probably mostly about Jehoshaphat and eight things that he did in crisis to lead, to get through that. So I want to give some some practical wisdom next week you know we're I'm kind of switching off back and forth with different things I just don't want it to be all consuming and only teaching about the crisis I want you know we need to eat uh, have a whole diet a healthy diet. healthy diet yes um, hey our daughter Teresa's watching from Minnesota she is? hi honey we love you hey we're praying for your dad just so yeah, you know we are all right should we close in prayer Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for these that have watched tonight. Lord, I ask just that you continually um, lift them up, that in times of trouble, you're our refuge, you're our strength, and a very present help in trouble. Lord, you are even there more than we can even think of or anticipate in these troublesome times, the things that bring tightness. And Lord, right now that can be different. Some people are struggling with emotional you know, um, pressure, uh, 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 emotional, physical. Lord, maybe it's a financial in some people's lives. Maybe it's spiritual. Uh, there's loneliness and, and fear, the enemy and the distress and these troubles that are causing. So we look to you tonight. And Lord, I thank you that you're bringing the peace that you're with every single person watching, that you're giving them strength right now spirit, soul, and body to stand strong, to overcome, to not quit, never give up. Father, that we can look to you for our help. We can look to you for our prosperity. We can look to you to meet our needs. And we can always, always rely on you, that you are faithful in all times. When we stumble, you're always there. So thank you, Lord, for being with us tonight. Thank you for the words and thank you for continuing leading and guiding us in all of our relationships that we have in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Have a good night. Have a good night, you guys. Love you.